It's different if there's women out here who really ain't doing nothing. Like, you know what I'm saying? They're not even tracing no goals, no dreams, no nothing. They just walking at Walmart and a warehouse. I want a man with six figures and a burger bag. How? But those those are those exist too. And and I would say this. Well, of course. Most of the women who want the man, okay. the one percent men, are the women you just described. Really? Absolutely. That's interesting. Listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Cause I just wanna build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I wanna keep it real with you. I wanna live better, eat better. I wanna love better, sleep better. Yeah, I wanna feel so aligned. Sublime. Uh, like I was asking before, do you feel like there is a problem between black men and black women? Like a gap in understanding? What do you think it is and how do we solve it? Ooh, how do we solve it? Um, well, first, I do feel like it's a disconnect. That's a fact. Um, ah. hmm. I can say that the reason why I feel it may be more of a disconnect than anything is because black men don't necessarily know how to set their standards more so earlier on. Um, I feel like they allow a lot to happen earlier on and then feel some type of way later on. But it's like, why you didn't correct that issue before? Things like what, what do you mean? Uh, more like, I guess, the communication. Really, honestly, I mean, women, you know, sometimes we might be snappy or we might have an attitude or, you know, but if it's not set, like, that's not how we're gonna have this conversation or this is not how we're gonna speak to one another. Cause we, as women, we act out of emotion. You know, sometimes we're not even thinking, we're just trying to get you to see where our point and that's it. But I feel like sometimes it does take men because you guys aren't as emotional to not get on our level, but to bring us up to y'all level more so like, okay, I'm not really trying to hear this. So, I mean, or, you know, she, she tripping or that's not what it was or that's not the perspective. It's more like, okay, let's bring it back. We're not going to be yelling. We're not going to be cussing at each other. Like, let's bring it back. Like, we can't have this conversation now. Then maybe we need to have it later on. But... I do feel the value of what you're saying. So what, one, one of the things that uh, a lot of guys talk about and kind of complain about, especially in our community, is this idea that our women have that I need somebody who can handle me. Mm -hmm. I need somebody who can put me in my place. And black men are asking, why does it even have to get there? Why, why do we... It's like trying to tame a wild horse or something like that. Like, why do we have to come in all aggressive and uh, shut up and sit down and all that stuff to, to get a woman on our, our page or to, you know, respect yeah. her? I wouldn't say it's because I feel like that's what it was at first for me. Like, I needed that rah-rah, like that alpha, that dominancy. But dominancy is, like I said, in just simple conversation, like correction is more so what's needed. You know, it's that you don't have to be like, be shut up or, you know, don't do this and then that. I'm going to smack you and all that. No, it's just a simple, okay, what are you doing? Like, why would you say it that way? Like, that's not what I meant, you know? Or, you know, some, some simple corrections, sometimes simple corrections could switch our whole attitudes because it makes us think like, damn, did I just really just snap on him like that? Oops, I'm sorry. You know, then it, it makes you think. But if, like I said, you match that level, or you just tune us out, you know we're gonna keep going. It, but if, if, if that becomes the expectation, it. if it becomes the expectation of, you know, whenever I pop off, or whenever I get rowdy, he calms me down. Doesn't that in a way incentivize that type of behavior? It makes that the standard. As opposed to both people are adults and both people come into the conversation maturely. See, a lot of times we do come into conversation maturely. It just turns into that way because we don't feel like we're listened to or we don't feel like our point is being valued or our issues being valued. This is really just me being a woman based off the conversations I have with men sometimes, especially men that I'm in a relationship with. It's like I come to you with my problem or my issue and now we reverse the issue to what I did. It's like we never even talked about what the issue, like my issue. We just really just went to yours and I'll have to defend myself. And I'm like, oh, okay. Now your problem is solved and we're not gonna go back to mine because now you ready to move on to the next thing. 
So now that's why we got attitudes and we see here, we got resentment because like, dang, man, we can never just let it out. And it'd be like, you know what, babe, that was not even a perspective. That's not even what it was. Because a lot of times it's all about perspective. But if the communication isn't already there to where I know, you know, how you move or, you know, or if I know you, then it really shouldn't be no type of miscommunication because I know you. I know you wouldn't move that way, you know? Or a lot of women defensive. Just off top. Like I think so. Baseline. I think so. I think so. I mean, it's... How can I say this? I feel like men act like they don't know other men. Right. Like they don't understand how men operate out here in the real world. Like you don't have homeboys and they talk all that mess about what they do to women or how they act in front of women, but know that women go through things. So our trauma, granted, not saying that men don't go through anything, but in my opinion, if you don't speak on something, do you really go through it? You feel me? Because it's like at the end of the day, it's like, why would you not, why would you, you know, saying not speak up? And women, we speak up too much. And men don't speak up at all. And now we in this miscommunication where it's like, dang, I talk too much. You act like you can't talk to me. So now I'm the bad person or now you the bad person, you know? Do you think... That's interesting. Do you, do you think that black men deserve more empathy from black women? A hundred percent. But you have to, they have to allow us to be empathetic. How do you do that? Show emotion. Be human. It's okay to cry. It's okay to be mad. It's okay to go through things. It's okay to open up. The issue, I guess, in my mind is you don't even trust me. You know, black men don't even trust black women enough to really spill out our, you know, how they feel. Not necessarily. I mean, sometimes, you know, I get it how women be like, you know, maybe too sensitive. You can be get too sensitive, or, you know, some women may feel like that's sad. But a lot of women never really was raised with a man around to even know, or if they weren't raised around a man, he probably was all macho, macho, and never cried. You know, so it's really the the standard of a man. It's like, dang, do you have to be strong? Okay, let me ask you this. Why, do you why, have to be strong all why, the time? Why do you think black men don't trust black women? Um, I really think it's like they feel. Because I'll, I'll tell you, but I want to I hear what you think first. Maybe they just don't feel that, like they're going to be accepted if they are as, as far as like trusting as far as with emotions and how they feel. Um, maybe they just feel like they just won't be accepted. You know, like maybe it's really like on some, and I, I can't even, I'm not, she probably don't think I'm a punk or something like that. Like, you know, I can't even, but it's, it's like, then it's like, that's how you're going to raise your sons. Like, you know, it's like, dang, now it's going to be a whole cycle. And now women are still here. Like, well, what are we supposed to do? You know? Nah. <laughs> Why? So why don't men trust women? Please let me know. Now, I'm not going to speak on like men and women broadly. I'm going to speak specifically black okay. men and black women. Okay, cool. As a heterosexual black man, mm -hmm. you have a shorter leash of human expression than any other group. Okay. What I mean by that is, and I was saying this the other day, as a matter of fact, I was like, um, lesbians and white men get a lot freer range of human expression with black women than heterosexual black men. Okay. Because as, as a heterosexual black man, the expectation is that you are a, you're Tupac with a PhD. Okay. You're a thug, educated scholar, corporate nigga, who's also like can fight and this, 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 and that. So you're pigeonholed into this very small box. Right. And believe it or not, our women don't let us escape that box because they select sexually for men who are close to that box. So what I mean by that is, the sensitive dude that you went to middle school with, high school with, he didn't get no play. He didn't get no, no. he didn't get no bitches, he didn't get no pussy, he didn't it's get none of that. Shit. So now, either he becomes more like future, or, or the futures are the ones who actually, you know, get selected. And then the women turn 30 and like, we're all the sensitive niggas. I don't want no sensitive nigga. I can tell you but that. I'm, what I'm saying is not necessarily sensitive, sensitive, but like we're all the, the good dudes, quote unquote. You, you, you selected them out of the market. You're right. You're right. 
I guess it's... And then we still get blamed for it. That's the crazy part. I mean, you're definitely going to get blamed for it because, I mean, ultimately, it's like... To me, those kids who didn't get any, any play play back in the day day, okay, it's confidence. It's not about, to me, in my mind, it's not about your future, if you're, if you're, you know, a PhD, like, none of that matters. Like, as long as you're confident, it's A1, it don't matter who you are. Where does it come from? Within, self-love. It's the love within self. And if you don't have self-love, then now you're out here looking like, dang, man, these women like this or these women like that, it shouldn't matter. I'm saying. We notice the lack of self-love. We have to be honest with ourselves. Self-love also has to, we, we operate in communities. Self-love yeah. also has a lot to do with, like, how you're viewed by the external world. It's, I it's think it easy. has a lot to do with how you're raised. Absolutely. But it's easy to say, I love myself as a woman. Or it's easier to say, I love myself if you're attractive. It's easier to say, I love myself as a man if you have money. It's harder to say, external validation is a part of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So like, we can't throw that away. No, I wouldn't throw it away. I guess it's like, because when you make your point, you know, as a man, I, you know, I can't love myself without, you know, because I don't have any money. But it depends on your level of what you want for yourself. If you're a frugal man and you're a minimalist, you really necessarily, it's not about money to you. You know what I'm saying? You want to live life and live experiences. That's like, not true. I mean. Because, and this is why it's not true. What are the two things we say define masculinity? Two things. We talk about it all the time. I mean, great. Are you talking about like the whole general protect and provide? Protect and provide. So in order for me to provide, I have to have something. In order for me to protect, I have to be something. For yourself. You can't divorce those two things. Yeah, for, for myself right. and then for others. But you can't divorce those two things. So I'm encouraging yeah. men to first become the type of man you want to be for yourself. Exactly. Before you can be somebody for somebody else. But at the same time, like... This idea that you can still be confident and all that without becoming somebody. Oh, yeah. It's not rooted well, in anything. Well, it's really becoming that somebody is you. Whoever you want to be. There is, no, like, I don't, I don't believe, I don't believe people should be cookie, try to cookie cut themselves into what everybody else feels like or society feels like you should be. You know what I'm saying? What like, do you mean by what, that? Um, I mean, I guess it just goes along with like just the point of, you know, it's the outside world influences your self-love or your self-identity. And I mean, it might be a little hint in there is more on the lines of I like that and I don't like that. Not necessarily. It's like they won't like me because of this or they won't like me because of that. I'm not going to get this because of because we're in 2022. You create your own world. I get that. So it's like now it's like, I mean. When it, I mean, especially when it comes to relationships, there's so many different type of women and so many different type of men. It's like, if you just don't want it for yourself, that's the problem. Like, it's to no, me, no, it's no. all and like I agree with stuff. that. I agree with that. I, I think the difference, though, is men, I think more than women, especially black men, understand that life is a competition. And we okay. understand that. I could be as fast as I want to be, but am I the fastest dude on my football team? Right. Or am I in the top five? Like, we're always constantly ranking ourselves. Right. And the external world does it to us as well. Like, our, our, even our girl would be like, you know, uh, Steven took his girl to Bora Bora. You only took me to Cancun. Like, we have to deal with that constantly. Because you knew I wanted to go to Bora Bora. Why would we go to but Cancun? But see, my, my point is that <laughs> external stuff. You should have saved a little bit of extra money with that, the Bora Bora. That external stuff is, is important. Now, let, let's, let's transition, because you just made a good point. Why do you think our women in particular put so much pressure on the black man? And I'll give you, I'll give you an okay. example of what I mean. So one of our you know, interviewee, uh, interviewees, uh, his name's Poetic Style okay. on, uh, on Instagram, he said that the current attitude for women, and I think probably more so in your city, Atlanta, Georgia, is one of, if you don't make six figures, you ain't shit as a man. And we are comparing ourselves mm -hmm. and women are comparing men mm -hmm. to the highlight tapes mm -hmm. of 1% men. Okay. So why do you think that is? And do you feel like it's a problem? I don't think it's a problem um, because we're, we're, we're um, trans, um, I guess more so transcending into that wealth 
the the life of wealth now, um, where it's easy. Not I would say easier, but it's it's given to us in a simple manner. Not necessarily it's easy, but it's, it's simple people are really becoming millionaires overnight. And as far as women, if we want to elevate ourselves and our men don't want to elevate themselves, then where does that leave us? Lonely, alone. But if we, I, I hate that men just take it so like. Like, especially when B. Simone had came out and she was on like, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't want no nine to five man. I want someone who's an entrepreneur. I want, you know, I want a boss. Da, da, da. And it was like, why? And men were so rah, rah about it. Like, hey, man, don't nobody want her anyway. But why isn't that y'all telling men if y'all want her, then that's what y'all need to do. At the end of the day, why wouldn't you want to uplift yourself to be on some type of level that they want? Because clearly, I mean, you want her. So how are you complaining? Because that's what she desires or that's what she expects for herself. Because for herself, that's what she's doing. It's different if there's women out here who really ain't doing nothing. Like, you know what I'm saying? They're not even tracing no goals, no dreams, no nothing. They just walking out Walmart and a warehouse. I want a man with six figures and a burger bag. How? But those those are those exist, too. And, and I would say this. Well, of course. Most of the women who want the man, the one percent men are the women you just described. Really? Absolutely. That's interesting. What do I you guess because I don't hang around those type of women. Well, but, but, okay, because I can understand the women that I hang around. You know, what I'm saying I'm ambitious, so it's like it only ma- it only it makes sense. You know, what I'm saying because at the end of the day, I'm gonna get it with with or without a man because I have no choice. What do you think the average salary of a black woman is in America? Just give me a number. Um, I'll probably say about forty. Thirty something. Mm-hmm. What do you think the average salary of a black man is? Mm, 50. 40 something. Mm-hmm. The reason I think that's important, and I think, you know, men have to deal with statistics mm-hmm. more so than women. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of times the measuring stick that women compare us to are unrealistic, unsustainable ideals. So if you go on Instagram, you'll think that there are a bunch of millionaires and six figure niggas running around here. The reality isn't the case. Oh, no, for sure. And especially, I think what happens too with our women, they know how to play the part. Right. So you'll have a woman, for instance, she has a master's degree. And unfortunately, a lot of our women fall into this category. Mm -hmm. She has a master's degree. She only makes fifty thousand dollars a year, Mm -hmm. but she has six figures of debt Mm -hmm. and she expects a high value man. Mm -hmm. Or you have a woman who she has a Ph.D. You know what I'm saying? She's disagreeable. She's she's not a pleasant person to be around, Mm -hmm. but she expects a one percent man. So I think the problem becomes when women are looking down on the men that they qualify for and they think the men that are out of their league are the men that they qualify for. I don't think necessarily they look down upon them. I just feel like more so they expect more from them. Why? And why not? Why shouldn't me as a person... I guess it's because she's expecting more for herself. I'm not speaking on the ladies who speak for work at Walmart. You know what I'm talking about? Because I don't know them. But I'm saying for those ambitious women who, who women who are actually going out, you know, doing for themselves and, you know, granted things happen in life. But at the end of the day, it's like I see myself there one day. But I think I think it's all a mentality thing. I don't necessarily think it's like just because you're making this much money. That's you content with that make, making that much money. That's the problem. What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with it when it's for you. No, no, no. I'm just not, no, no, I'm just not the one for you. And there's no problem with that. No, but it, That's what it's like, dang, it's like how, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of with the whole homosexual and heterosexual, like, you know, homosexuality is so rah, rah, rah. But when, when men st- or straight men wants to, you know, they just want to say straight pride. They want to be confident in this. Now we at that point where it's like, dang, like I'm, I'm a man. You know, Adele just went on, on, on her award show and just said, I'm proud to be a woman. And they was mad about that. So it's like. I think, I think the reason it's even a conversation is because if it was one offs, right? If it, yeah. was, if it was like, you know, one in every 10 women wants a yeah. high value man and they feel like, you know, you should want more of this and that, that would be fine. The problem is, especially in our community, yeah. eight, nine out of 10 women don't think you're doing enough ever and they feel like they're deserving of one percent dues because and and this is a good point that he made in the last video he said that 
we have been socialized to compare ourselves to the highlight tapes mm -hmm. of the 1%. Not just the 1%, but also their highlight tapes. Mm -hmm. So what it creates is average people don't think they're average and they don't think they, uh, they deserve average people. When the reality, most people are average. But what is average? It depends on what you're, you know, what you're using. Are we using salary? You know, right. or a lot of women are making the average amount, but they feel like because of my ambition and this and that, I'm not average. And it's like you, you, you like refuse to quantify things. That's the problem. A lot of women refuse to quantify things. So I'm not average because I feel like I'm not average, even though all the metrics say I am. OK. Is that a problem? I wouldn't say it's a problem, but it's like, I guess it's who made the metrics. If I walk outside and shit, 10, 20, 30 people, everybody I come in contact with me, the, the conversation isn't on, you know, is it really, am I just average? Am I above average because I'm in that situation, in, in that environment? But I will be average if I go sit with some millionaires. You know what I'm saying? Like, even though I'm ambitious, Technically, I'm average to them because I don't make as much money, but our minds are the same. So who really makes the metrics to say who average and who not? Numbers. To me, it's like really conversation. Numbers. Numbers. Really? Numbers. See, I base my averageness on conversation. Because it's like if you don't have enough, if you don't even, if you're a nine to five, you know, nine to five working and don't even want to have experiences or grow and learn, then you're average to me. And, and I think no matter how much money you got, because sure. you could be making $150,000 as a tech person. All you do is use 20% of your money to come than, home. It's bigger than money. And the reason I right. say that um, for, you know, for men, and we understand this, I can, you know, so I played football in high school. Okay. I was a quarterback, right? Okay. One of the reasons I messed up my knee is because I, I took it upon myself to go work out with the linemen, with the big boys. Okay. Right. So I can talk that linemen talk. I can I can converse with them the whole nine, but can I squat five hundred pounds? Yes. Did you or know no? you couldn't squat five hundred pounds? I couldn't squat five hundred pounds. But you knew that before you decided you wanted to squat five hundred no, pounds. No, but my point is, I can talk the talk of somebody who can. Yeah. But at the end of the day, can I perform? You could if you talk that talk, and then you see what they're doing, and then you go ahead and you learn how to do what they do. I can't. I was one hundred and eighty pounds. I mean, you could listen if you would. If you all you gotta do is start slow. Okay, a little bit at a time. Point. That's not my point. Listen, I get. I, I listen. I know your. I get your point, of course. But my whole thing is really, it's genuinely like, yeah. You mean that don't mean you can make you alignment either. If you just can squat five hundred pounds, you know what I mean. You a quarterback. You feel me? You know how to the, move. The they talk, can't move the, like how you move. The talk doesn't mean anything. If I think I'm a high value, and it, you know, as much as. We talk about Kevin Samuels. One of the things I do appreciate about him, and not about what he talks about with women, but with men, mm -hmm. he says, you might think you're the shit as a dude. Mm -hmm. What do the numbers say? Right. How many zeros in your bank account? Right. What kind of job do you have? What is your social circle comprised of? Right. Because until then, we hadn't really been putting people's feet to the fire. We hadn't been putting people, you know what I'm saying, next to a measuring stick. Mm -hmm. So... Can you be a good person? Yes. But in order to, you know, enter this club of high value, whatever the case right. may be, you must make six figures. Right. And if you don't make six figures, you could think all you will, you know, you want that you're high value. But like, we have to put numbers to things. Why do you think women don't like putting numbers to things? Or do you think it's not a woman thing? Mm hmm. I mean, technically, women do put numbers to things if they expect you to make a certain amount. But they don't know how many, like, what percentage of men are going to make that amount. Oh, we're not gonna, we're we're not gonna go to the statistics at all. Like, it's not. Why not though? <laughs> because if we really go into statistics, then it's like one. Of, I mean, the ratio for men to women is way astronomical. So it's like, why are we even talking about it? Because in reality, it's gonna be. I mean, if the ratio is like one to twenty-two. It's gonna be twenty one with nobody. So what is we what are we really talking about? You know. But, what I mean? but you know the problem though is what. And I've seen this. And that's not time. even one. We might not. We might get half of one. We never even know. You but, know what I'm saying? And, and, and I've seen I've seen this happen. So um, a friend of mine, he's 
He's between like 6'6", six, 6'8". Six, six, okay. 320 pounds. Okay. He didn't go to the NFL, but he's got his master's degree. He makes six figures, makes good money. Smart dude, interesting dude, well-traveled the whole nine. And he was telling me that his ex-girlfriend treated him like he was a regular dude. She didn't do the math to understand how astronomically rare he was. Mm -hmm. So she could never really appreciate him. Right. So the problem of a lot of our women doing this is even when they get that 1% man, they treat him like every other dude. And it's like, why would he stick around? So you, you guys get hurt in the, in the long run. Oh, 100%. Because we don't have no examples.